it's working. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, uh, we are now live. We like live streaming for the meeting. And I think everybody who we we're expecting is here. Um, the first item is an appointment of the chair for the afternoon. I nominate Councillor Deborah Roberts. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, I nominate Councillor Deborah Roberts. And I agree. Seconded. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I will now take the chair. Um, what I will do is uh, an introduction and procedure. Now, um, I'm Deborah Roberts. I'm a district councillor on South Cams uh, for Foxton Ward. Uh, I will ask my colleagues, first of all, my councillor colleagues and then officers to introduce themselves. My name is Mark Howell. I am the district councillor for the Papworth uh, Ward. Good afternoon, uh, Councillor Joe Hales for the Melbourne Ward. Rory Cosgrove, Principal Officer, People and Protection at South Camps. Good afternoon. My name is Brooke O'Neill and I'm the Licensing Technical Officer. Good afternoon, I'm Rachel Jackson, the Principal Licensing Officer. Good afternoon, I'm Shirley Tracy, Solicitor and Legal Advisor this afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Aaron Clark, I'm Democratic Services Officer for this afternoon. Apparently you got a microphone for the wrong spot with the cameras, thank you Lawrence. And I'll be taking a, 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 rec a record of the meeting today. Um, and could you introduce yourselves please? Um, good afternoon, I'm Jill Green, I'm currently um, partners with Luigi from LJ's. Good afternoon, I'm Luigi, I'm the licensee of LJ's Bar and Barista, the restaurant. And uh, the gentleman uh, who is with us with Zoom, would you please introduce yourselves, gentlemen? Simon Bathy, I'm, I'm, um, we live at number 36 uh, next door to LJ's. Could I ask you to speak a little louder or turn your microphone up? We're having difficulty hearing you at the moment. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Okay, um, yes, yeah, Simon Bathy. I live next door to LJ's in Church Street. And I'm Michael Turner, and I live right opposite LJ's. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Um, the third item on the agenda is declaration of interest. I will declare an interest on this one because um, I was, to my recall, part of the uh, original um, team that looked at your application, the original licensing committee. So uh, I'm declaring that, um, but I come to the matter afresh today. And the other thing that we need to think about for procedure is there is a lot of work going on in the building, as you can see and hear. So is everybody happy if we close this door where the noise is mainly coming from? We've opened, Aaron has opened the back door there, so we have got air movement. Um, is everybody happy with that? And it's also uh, for you to decide uh, yourselves if you wish to wear face masks or not. Um, we are not doing this afternoon, but it's entirely up to your good selves. Okay. The application in front of us is to vary a premises license for LJ Sandwich Bar. So yeah. I am going to ask the officers um, if they could go through the agenda um, as a, an introduction for the afternoon, please. Thank you, Chair. So on the 25th of October 2021, an application for the variation of a premises license for LJ's Sandwich Bar and Barista, located on 40 Church Street, Gambling Gay, SG19 3JH, was submitted to the licensing authority and advertised and consulted upon. The application is to extend the terminal hour for the supply of alcohol for consumption on the premises from 12 p.m. until 10.30 p.m., Monday to Sunday. 
The current licence, which is Appendix D, currently permits the supply of alcohol from 12pm until 3pm Monday to Wednesday and 12pm until 9pm Saturdays and Sundays. It's also to extend the opening hours of the premises until 11pm each day to enable a 30 minutes drinking up time following the last sale of alcohol. It's also to amend the existing condition so as to read the courtyard will be closed to customers for the consumption of alcohol and or food after 11pm every day. The condition currently states until 9pm every day. So Environmental Health have requested that this be reduced to 9.30pm each day and this has been agreed by the applicant. See paragraph 10 in the agenda. The application has been subject to representations from Gamlingay Parish Council and four local residents. So these are attached as appendix G to G1 to G5 from page 37. At paragraph 12 in the report, reference is made to one representation being submitted with audio clips. The submission was in fact video, audio clips and photographs which have been circulated to the applicant. The applicant's audio clip submission and sub supplementary photographs and documents have been circulated now to all parties. In attendance today, we have the applicant, Mr. Lani, and his partner, Ms. Green. Attending remotely, we have Mr. and Mrs. Buffy, who submitted a representation, and a Mr. Turner. Officers from Environmental Health are also present today. Um, we have Rory here and two officers remotely. Members, when considering the application, should be aware that they may only take into account parts of the application or objections relating to the licensing objectives, which are the prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, the prevention of public nuisance, and the protection of children from harm. Members have the right under the Licensing Act 2003 to determine this application after considering the relevant representations. Members may A, grant the application as it was submitted, B, reject the application, or C, grant the application but impose conditions that promote the licensing objectives. All parties will remain, maintain a right to appeal to a magistrate's court after the determination of this committee. If there are no questions, this concludes my introduction. Thank you very much. Um, two initial questions. Well, one informative. We have, um, prior to the meeting started, uh, listened to the audio um, uh, information that we've been given. We went through um, both um, that that came from the uh, from the. Uh, firm and also from the neighbours. So we have listened to that. We haven't discussed it. It was merely to listen to it as, as further evidence. So we have done that. And can I just check with you, Brooke? Um, are we now saying that there has been an agreement um, uh, of by the applicant that the time would now be 9.30 yes. every night yes. with a 30-minute uh, T time on top of that for drinking up. So the condition was, let me just check. So this is just for the courtyard. That's just so, for the... Yeah, at the moment it has an additional condition on the license. Yes. Which says no food and they want to, want to extend it to 11 p.m. But environmental health and the applicant have agreed that it will be 9.30 p.m. So no, and and no people half an hour for drinking up? No. No, so it's 9.30. Yeah. End of. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so can I just make very clear on this, please? So we're referring to paragraph 10. So um, the courtyard may still be used for food after one after um, nine o'clock, but not alcohol, is that correct? No, so 
the condition that stands is alcohol and or food, so both. So the courtyard will be closed at 9.30 p.m. Right. So okay. no alcohol or food to be consumed in the yeah. courtyard. Yeah, sorry, when you say 9.30, it threw me a little bit then, but yeah, it, I can see on the different days, yeah. it's different times. Yeah. yeah, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Any questions, Councillor Howell? That's Joe's, that's his. Joe, sorry. <laughs> on the other one. I know. No, blatant. <laughs> the two thorns. The other question that I'm going to ask you is, have you sort of any idea um, in time-wise how long your presentation and information will take? Because um, we need to make sure that the other party is going to have that same amount of time if they, if they require it. So have you any idea how long you're likely to be taking? Um, not long at all, really. We just answer their questions, whatever they we would like to have the, the chance to answer what they put forward, if that's okay. So, um, we, yes. So you don't want to make a presentation. You're just going to answer no, the questions. No, we'll just answer okay. whatever they put forward. Um, I need to ask the other party. Have you got any further presentations? Obviously, we've read all the information that has come to us. That's in the in the file, and also listened to the audio earlier this afternoon is there something that you would like to specifically say at this time in the, in, in uh, relation to your concerns uh, no i'm quite comfortable if you if you read the, the documentation that you have all the information so i, I won't waste your time by repeating it and the other people with you similarly i'm on bond with that okay. I've, I've said what i want to say okay Sorry, can I can I just get a clarification? The the original. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. The last three years ago, the application. Um, once we agreed to it, um, identified the the limited use of of um, next door and the courtyard, and talked about um, not using after nine thirty. Did I understand that? With regard to the new application, there's been a conversation between Environmental and Louis and Jill that rather than, what was it, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, they're now looking to, to, to go back to the existing arrangements, albeit on more days. Rachel, can you clarify that, please? Yes, Chair, just to confirm the agreement for the 9.30 p.m. for the use of the courtyard, but obviously the application is still for the extension of hours for the interior of the premises. So, uh, gentlemen, what has been suggested, and it is only a suggestion, there's no agreement whatsoever at this moment in time, but what's been suggested is two different times, one for the courtyard, which is the earlier time, but they are still requesting um, the other times for the, for the internal building side. Correct, Rachel? Yeah, Brooke, thank you. Yes, Chair. Um, I'll kick off um, with some questions to the applicants. Um, given the fact that uh, three years ago you, you did get this um, application, through, your application through, and this is a, a different ch changing of time, can you tell us, uh, first of all, really, why you feel that you need this extra time? Um, because Originally, you felt that the hours that we were that we was given was adequate. Um, so, so why have you first of all had a, a change of mind on timing, please? Um, basically, the last two years has been a struggle, as I'm sure you're aware, and um, we feel with the distance in and the, all the controls in place, i.e., uh, trying to get people to stay outside and try, try and stay ventilated and whatever, it has been really hard. And we have to limit the amount of people that we have in there um, because of this. And people come and they want, to, they, a lot of people work outside the village, so when they come and use us of an evening, they can't come round till seven o'clock, half past seven. We're then very restricted to how many people we can have. And um, we found it very, very difficult to, to make a living from that. Um, 
so what we now, and also the people that do use us have all been coming to us and saying, look, it, you know, it's such a shame because we're always rushing. You're always rushing us to serve us, to get us out the door. Um, and basically, you know, it's been the pressure from the local village people that has made us come and make this decision to actually see if we can get it extended to accommodate so their needs. Three hours, isn't it? It's for three hours. You know, we close in the afternoon because we haven't got anybody we coming in. Up. And we get ready for the evening. And our first sit down might be at six o'clock. And, you know, it's impossible to kind of turn any decent turnover in that, in that short amount of time. And that's basically the only reason we've come back. You know, we won't be working. We, would, we don't want it weeknights. We just really, it's for Friday and Saturday Stacking evening because it's, it, we haven't got a call for it. We haven't got customers for that the other evenings. It's just... It's It's, it's just when Valentine's falls on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, we can't open because we we're, we're not licensed to open on them evenings. So we miss out. We missed out on eat out to help out because we couldn't. We weren't allowed to open. There's a lot of things we're missing out on, which the government are allowing us to do, but we're not allowed to do it because we're not licensed for them sort of days. And we've got the Queen sent by Centennial next year, and they're doing a street party. If they do it on a, Friday, on a Sunday, we won't be allowed to open because we're not licensed to sell alcohol on that day. We're allowed to open till half nine in the evening to serve food, but we're not allowed to serve alcohol. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Howell wants to come through. Yeah, I'm going to ask a question. Um, looking at all the reports, there's quite a lot of mention of smell. Now, I appreciate that you are a catering business and therefore that's going to happen. But looking at your original license, it did say there, excuse me, I'll just look back where I try and find it. Um, it said there that, oh, here it is. Um, yeah, page 31. To avoid noxious smells causing nuisance to nearby properties, the premises are to be properly vented. Do you properly vent and what have you done? We've bought a brand new extractor fan after the after the the meet last when we had the last meeting. Um, the government have insisted on us to keep the doors open, windows open, area. We keep all the doors open. We keep all the windows open. We've had all new filters put in. It's an internal filter, so it'll suck up, clean, blow out cold air. It's not an external one, um, because I know that we'll be complained if we put a a chimney outside um, so it's, it's it's an external one so we're just going by the government guidelines we're leaving the windows open we've got the doors open we've got a one-way system in place we've got all our signage up you know uh, there's nothing else we can do and also the only complaint we've had regarding the smell it's, at all is from, the is from the next door neighbor the other houses the other side of us all the arms houses as you can see they're all quite happy for us to get the extension of hours. None of them have complained about no. any smells or anything. We only got one person that's saying that it's like that. And I think... Putrid. You know, I find that word dis distasteful. You know, it's not putrid. It's a smell. It's a cooking smell, you know. And normally, the windows and door, they're shut prior to what's been going on recently. I don't think we need to explain. We know what's happening. Okay, thank you. Um, with your permission. Yes. Um, there's also made reference on several times with regards to rodents. Could you tell me, please, with regards to your own um, pest control, which every license, you know, every, every business has to have, so it's not a problem. Okay. Could you tell me, please, what it actually says? Um, we have three pest control boxes outside. outside. Um, we spoke to the neighbours. Um, at one point, and we said, look, you know, they keep saying this is wrong, that's wrong. The best thing to do is to contact yourselves, you know. So we had the environmental people turn up unexpected several times. They actually took our rating from a four-star to a five-star. Five star. They were very impressed with everything we had in place. 
And the same with the COVID people. They came round and we said how cold we are. We're freezing in there. We've got every window and door open. We've had to buy our staff extra thermals. You know, in the middle of winter when you've got not one door shut, you know, it, it's, it's hard going. I mean, it, it, it explains, doesn't it, what we're up, the pressure we're under. No, I had every Monday morning, I used to clean the bin out because I used to empty it every Monday morning. But now they've changed it to a Tuesday morning. So now every Tuesday morning, I bleach it, I hose it down. It's a big green bin. It's in, in, everyone can see it. it's in bird's eye view. So if there was anything untowards it, someone would have complained about it. You'd have had lots of complaints. More than one complaint. It's cleaned every Tuesday morning by myself. All the rack boxes, all the rodent boxes, I check every Tuesday morning, fill up the ones that need filling and put them back in place. I've got one next to the bin, one next to the back door, and one next in the corner of the yard. That's three bins, and that's more than a handful for the size of the yard mm -hmm. and for the size of the shop. Also, they, was, they were saying about the bin being over full once, that you can't get the lid down. Once. And we do apologise for that, but we did phone up um, the local South Cams, and South unfortunately Cams. they explained that they're um, short they had very short staffed. They were changing their routes, and they'd missed us. And they came round within a couple <coughs> of days. We would have taken it to the the um, disposal ourselves, but you couldn't get booked in, as you know. You know, it's difficult. I feel that we we're trying. To, I'm trying to answer it as truthfully as I can. But I feel that any little thing that they found, they'd stack. Do you know what I mean? Straight away on that. It is listed. It has been reported. It's been logged that we've been we phoned up. And it's happened a couple of times, but that's all. It's not that I'm sure it's not their fault. And they did, within a couple of days, come and empty the bin. You know, we try our best to push that lid down when that happened. And nor on normal circumstances, it doesn't happen. No. But they did it, you know, it was out of our control. We couldn't get them to come out and empty it. They were short-staffed, etc. Councillor Hales. Thank you, Chair. Um, you, you talked about the cooker hood. It's just going, going um, moving on from uh, Councillor Hales' questions with regards to the cooking smells, what have you. But is this a domestic um, cooker hood which has got the internal charcoal, or is it it's a commercial? It's a link cat. It's a link cat internal. It's got three filters, three it's motors. An it's an industrial one. And it's one they recommend for indoors. Okay. And it costs me two and a half grand. Okay. All of the cooking processes, are they performed underneath that cooker hood? There's a griddle and two chip pans. And that is it. It is. And also, all the cooking is not done next to their house. All the cooking, you've so you've got their house was there. And you've got the bar, then you've got the yeah, archway. archway. It's an old coach archway that's fully ventilated, front to back, big mm. black gates that open that used to pull the court, the, the poachers coach, in. Whatever. Yeah. So that's that there. And then you've got the sandwich bar, and that's where the cooking is done. And there is nothing next to us on that cooking wall. There is nothing next to us but a driveway to their garage. Okay, so... So their house is... Like two built, you know, and, building plus away. And the wind normally blows down Church Street, not up Church Street. So it'll be blowing it away from the house. Okay. If so what I'd like to do is I'd like to explore why the objector would think or would state that uh, cooking smells are coming into their rooms in, within the house because that's what the actual evidence I've got says. No idea. No so idea. no idea. They're, All I know is they don't want a bar next to to their house because it devalues their property. That's what they've told us, and that's all I know. I have a question for Lawrence, if he could. Uh, a little earlier, when we were looking at the audio stuff, um, Aaron found us on the Google Earth. Can you find that, please, Aaron? That would be lovely. So we can see the street scene, so that we can uh, take from what the applicant has just said, please. Yeah. 
So. Yeah. So that's, that's where we cook, where it says no, Belgian can, no, sandwich bar. Can you bar. point out and say which one we are? Are we talking the okay. left hand? Or right. Or? We, that's where the neighbours live that have got the complaint. Now, yes. the bar is next door where you see Bar and Brazier. Right? Yeah. We don't cook in there. Then we've got the archway with the two black doors that are open on a, every day oh, right. because of everything. We had them open anyway, but now they're always open. Then we cook where the green door is. We, if the back of the shop, where there's another window and another side entrance and the front entrance, that door is always open. And the back window is open. And we cook at the, in the back of that shop by the back window where, the vent, where also the extractor fan is. And then this is a driveway that goes up to their garage. So where they live, we're not cooking there, we're not cooking there, we're cooking on this wall up that driveway. That's where the cooking, and that is where uh, the extractor fan And you is. say that there is no cooking facility in the right-hand one, the purpley We have a blue. kitchen in there, but we there. don't cook in there well, because it's, there. It's, it's, you have a kitchen it in doesn't there. work. Because this is the only, you would never be able to manage in there. So we no. cook in, in the sandwich bar. Um, it's got a washing up facilities in, that, in there, a little kitchenette in there, but... And it has got an extractor in there, but we don't cook in there because it's not big enough. It doesn't work. Because this is a roundtable discussion, I'm going to ask um, environmental health. Um, you've heard, Rory, what has been said by the applicant. And my understanding was that the, um, there isn't an outside um, chimney stack to take away the smells that's all done internally. When you, have you been to the site and... And have you um, been aware of um, pungent smells within the premises there? And have you actually been to the house inside the house either, the the the, uh, the complainant's house? So um, my colleague Joe Dixon, who is actually on here remotely, is investigating an alleged complaint of ODA at the moment, yeah. because it is ongoing. I am slightly concerned about how much information we should give. Um, I don't want anything from this to prejudice that investigation. Okay. Um, Dave, um, you're happy with that? That that's what would have to be the situation? That we can't press that one? Yeah, I think it's, it's probably appropriate not to press in terms of the yeah. complaint. However, I, I think it's fair to expect an answer to the question of have you been to the property? Yes. Has there been any smells? Is there a chimney that you're aware of? Okay, so back to environmental health. You just heard the legal advice that we've been given. Can you tell us, is there a chimney, an outside chimney, taking smells away or happy, not? Happy for, for us to answer that, um, if that's the advice. If I can refer to uh, my colleague Jo on the line, she's a, she's a case officer for that. Sound Joe muted herself, unmuted herself, then remuted herself. Joe, you need that's it. Hello, I can't hear anyone there. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes, Joe. If that's you, Joe, we can, we can hear you. Hello, <laughs> Joe. We, we have a we've asked a question of your colleague, but he tells yep. us that you're the person who's handling it. So we've got a, we know we don't want to go down the a certain route because you're investigating but can yes. you tell us the, the following have you been on site into the commercial premises and have you also been into the um, adjoining domestic house yes. um, and regarding the commercial premises and the kitchen um, is the extractor fan um, has it got an outside chimney that goes with it that so that the smells could go up into the atmosphere rather than be retained in the building uh yes yeah, so i have been to both the premises and also the uh so simon's property next door at 36 um and uh yeah the extractor fan it's got a carbon filter so when we spoke to luigi uh myself and chloe visited 
Luigi. Um, and we have asked him to check with the suppliers how often it needs to be changed um, based on his usage. Um, I'm not sure if Luigi's done that or not. Um, in regards to an outside chimney, I don't actually know. I think it was an internal extractor fan um, from what I gathered. I don't know if um, if Chloe wants to chip in at all. She was with me. Hi, this is uh, Chloe Mapledorum, environmental health practitioner. Yeah, we I visited with Joe. Um, there was no external and he confirmed that there was no external chimney. So it's all internal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, Chloe. So, so ladies, I, I'm, have I just picked up that what you've said is that on your visits there, you have um, recommended, suggested or told the applicant to um, make changes to um, the system that he's got in place at this moment. Is that correct? Well, to, to check whether or not the extractor fan needs its filters um, exchanging. I don't know if Luigi's done that yet. Um, it's, it wasn't that long ago we went to see them. And, and, and again, ladies, can you tell me that in situations where you do get um, these type of complaints about, about pungent smells or smells in general, um, would you also consider it, consider um, actually putting an outside chimney on that was high enough to actually get above um, the, uh, the rooftop situation and, and dissipate any smells actually out into the atmosphere. Would, would you ever do that? Do you want me to go, Jo? Yeah, you go for it. Yeah. Um, it very much depends on the premises and how what their load is. Um, it would be uh, something that a, a larger premises would do, but I, I actually don't know how many covers they do, that kind of thing. But again, in this situation with COVID, we, without COVID, we would expect the windows and doors to be closed, which would uh, mitigate uh, the majority of the odour. Um, we have asked him to contact the food team or COVID team to get their advice on that because I don't know where we stand on that. Thank you for that, ladies. Uh, uh, following on from that, the adjoining property is a very old building and not built up to modern day standards. Would you expect, therefore, that it would be easier to permeate smells through that sort of wall unless the commercial premises had actually put into position um, some sort of um, some sort of line between some sort of material between to stop that happening again uh, it very much depends on the type of business um, as far as I can see, it's breakfast type cooking um, and the, there, are, there are two rooms, I believe, in between the kitchen and the um, next door dwelling. Um, I don't know, Rory, do you want to come in on that one? Yes, um, in terms of, so I can sort of elaborate on that if, if I may. The, um, as I... I haven't visited the premises, but as, as I understand it, it terminates, doesn't terminate vertically, but horizontally out of, out of the building. So there's no flue going up to roof level, as, as I understand. Um, normally, if, um, if the filtration is good enough, then that, that could be adequate. You know, there's been mention of carbon filters, and if they are changed regularly enough, they can break down the odour molecules sufficiently, so you may not need high level discharge. Um, I mean, that remains to be seen. We are dealing with a complaint at the moment. If that was a requirement, we'd deal with that under our statutory nuisance powers. It may be subject to planning permission, but that would be, we will be addressing that and making any requirement irrespective of this application. Thank you, Chair. It's to Rory, first of all, and then it'll be Mr. Lally. So you just said there that the extractor actually goes to atmosphere it's just carbon filtered on the way out so just from listening as i understand it because it doesn't it's not external you've got sort of the i think is it the rear wall it comes out of 
whichever side of the building it will come out of the building horizontally rather than having a ducting that comes out and takes it up roof level without dispersing. So as long as the filtration is before it comes out of the building, it might provide enough odour reduction at that point. But that's what we're looking at at the moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr Lenny, um, what's the um, diameter of the external... Or, uh, I take it you draw, air, you draw fresh air from outside and then you dump it? No, no. It doesn't send, the, it, doesn't send it outside. It, it filters it through charcoal filter. It sucks it up, goes through two filters, one main filter, which catches the grease, and then it goes through charcoal filters. Once it goes through the charcoal, it brings it back into the room. It rotates it. So there's absolutely no external... There's no uh, external, nothing. Okay. No. Right, so the, the, obviously the $64,000 question is how often do you change the charcoal filters? The charcoal filters, I've just changed them. The, the, the first set of filters, we've started putting them in our dishwashers every night now. And I've bought the, I've bought the sponge that goes behind it and I'm changing them once a week. And it's brand new. It's a brand new filter. Right, so, yeah, but so the, the charcoal filters are the, the key bit, the grease It's filters. the green pit. They're brand new now, so they'll last me for another two, three months. And then I shall buy some more. It's a buyer's three months. Well, the, the, the output of our cooking, it, it, it doesn't warrant uh, to, to change the filters so often. Okay. The output of our, our cooking isn't that great. Not direct cooking. Especially in the evening, it's mostly cold foods, a few burgers, and that's it. They're platters. Okay. Um, one of the officers mentioned that they know how many covers you do. What are, what's your capacity for covers? <laughs> Sit down. Since in the day, not many. Not at many all. at all. It's breakfast, we probably do. A bats and baguettes. Ten, and it, we do sausage and bacon baguettes to take away. So they're just. Wrapped up and they go. They come in, collect them, and go. Bacon is um, bacon is pre-cooked beforehand, mm. and then when someone orders bacon, it's in the pan marie, um, filled with water. Heats up, keeps the food hot. Sausages and bacon we cook in the morning, and then when someone orders it, we just put it on the griddle to give it that extra heat that brings it back up to temperature, and then we we'll put it in the baguette and serve it. So that initial cooking it is for the first. 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so perhaps I've, I've, I misled you a bit there. I do apologise. So, covers, I mean seated. Yeah, yeah seating. I, know, I know, I know, seating. seating. We I do don't understand. open on a Monday, a Monday. Tuesday, we don't open next door because we're too quiet. Wednesday, we probably get four or five, five customers in there. It doesn't get used very much in the day. And in the evening, I don't, I don't want cover on Friday. We close Saturday night because we didn't have anybody we didn't have in no there customers. Because because everyone's getting frightened again because of all this new. Um, so the, your predominant trade then was. I could on a good on a good it's night if we were busy. Mm. The sandwich, the restaurant itself inside, can do sixteen covers. Right. So you can. And what about outside in the garden? Outside, you've got four, eight, twelve. You've got five tables. Twelve outside, covers. I think, yeah. Twelve. And you've got three tables of four, one table of two. 14, and then you've got the, 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 the slouch. Um, I'd say 16, 18. Okay. But it, it's never been like that otherwise. So you've got roughly 18 outside and you say 16 indoors. Is it? On a good day, if we have a good day. Just looking at your capacity, not what oh, you do on a day. And just, just another thing now, we, so would you say then, given what you've just described as your, your uh, seated service, Daily, yeah. That your predominant trade is takeaway. It's takeaway, take away, definitely. Yeah. We wouldn't yeah. be there if it wasn't for the takeaway. I was going to say you, you would have survive. existed on five covers no, a day. No, we wouldn't survive. No. I mean, it's cold sandwiches. We're a sandwich bar, and the other side is just something we've added to try and bring something to the community. Right. One big question, if I may, Chair. Um, this will also involve environmental health, I suppose, at one point. But given the fact there's a complaint that smells into a bedroom in the in the complainant's house, um, or the objector's house. Is there any part of your building, your two buildings, which are connected at roof level to 
the objector's house, i.e. do you have a common roof void, i.e. no firewalls in between the different buildings. So old buildings are hideously common for roof void, open right the way through. The, the roof itself is open. And that's your two oh, properties. Sorry. The, the attic roof, yes. But we had they're, a they're roof empty. put in there. But the, the landlord uh, at the last meeting, at the, the last licensing, he has put a, a, he's put a, so, um, he's put a, he's built a wall up there as well. To stop, to stop the smell. bedroom wall. Stop the smell. And we've also... They'd stop the sound. In that middle archway, the black gates that you see, that's the bit that goes up. Yeah. To near their We've bedroom. put a ceiling up. We've put a ceiling up. It used to be completely open, open. Um, but we put a ceiling up right. again can, to help I, with that. May, may I just, could just one of you speak for the first off, sure. right? And to uh, make really clear about it, I'm looking at the, the street scene on, on the laptop here. So on the left, I've got the LJ sandwich bar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I've got two black gates, then I've got LJ's bar and brazier. Yeah. Right. And then you have what we would we describe as the uh, the next door, the green windows, beige building, green windows, yeah? That's right. Green buildings. So over the LJ sandwich bar, there is a common roof void that goes across the sandwich bar and the black gates. Would that, would, yes. Is that what yes. you just said? Yeah. yeah. Does that connect in any way to the roof void no. above the um, bar building? So is there a common roof void from the alleyway on the left-hand side right the yes. way to your neighbour? Um, that's just the loft space. It's the loft space. Where we've put a false ceiling up, no, 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 that's right. it's created so, another void then. So if you were to go up on the edge into the loft by the chimney stack on that alleyway, yeah, you, can you walk, could walk, you can walk right, right the way through. to the far yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any access into your neighbour's loft space? No. no. Is it a is it a solid gable wall or is it a really tile down to a valley? Don't, I don't know because Simon put his own wall up there, so he told me. Um, but okay. my landlord built on top of that. There used to be old. When I last went up there, there used to be an old wardrobe doors. I think Simon stuck them up against the wall. I'm not sure. Um, but my landlord's been up there since, and he's. And he's, I'm not in the building, so I, don't, I can't, he's put, he's put something up there to stop the smell and the noise. All right, thank you. Councillor Howell, and then myself, please. Bearing in mind last time I asked a question about smell, we had another, it went on for another 20 minutes. I'll ask another question now, if you don't <laughs> mind. So let's talk about noise now, okay? So we've heard some recordings from, I think, both sides with regards to noise, um, which has gone on. Um, so I want to talk about noise and also about what you've done to kind of mitigate any noise which has affected your neighbours, please. Um, I feel we only listened to a very little bit of one of the recordings, yeah. just a bit of it, um, that if you listen to the recordings, if you, one of them particularly is when Luigi was calling me, I was at home, on his mobile phone asking me if I wanted a Chinese. I don't know if you can recall that. Um, he was on a private conversation, standing in the back of the shop at the bar entrance. Now, that was so loud, that recording, it makes me think that the level, and it was also if you hear the car going down that, that road, which is it was so loud. When we recorded them with that party and the dogs might coming over, that was just a recording off of a phone. And the level of that wasn't... I'm so sorry. I'm going to stop... With, no. with Chairman's permission, I'm going to stop you for a second, Sabrina. Let, let's just take everything for now yeah. as read. Okay. Just, 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 just take that. What I'm going to ask you is, and I, and I appreciate... I'm, I'm going to talk to give you time to think about it. Have you done anything to mitigate, to, to, to reduce the noise that could affect your immediate neighbour? Because that seems to be an issue... And um, I'm sure you've seen the diary of events and we've had the smell of food and noise with the two principal. There were other issues, but they were we, two principal. We ones. have got signs outside telling the customers. We've got, five, we've got six signs outside telling the customers to be mindful of the neighbours, keep your noise down. But we can't always be outside to monitor the customers. Every now and then someone will laugh, someone will talk. Someone, 
you know, it's, it's human nature. We, we can't control how people will speak or react outside. Um, conversations get loud, get high. I, we wouldn't, know, we wouldn't let anything get out no, of hand. No, we've never let anything go out of hand. We've, sort of we've been open nine world. years. And since we've opened the bar, this is when all the noise... We've had people sitting outside before this bar was open in the courtyard. There was people out there long before sitting out there, builders eating, drinking. Well, not drinking, but drinking tea. Um, well before we've opened the bar up. So I can understand where all this noise has come from. And it's not no noisier than what it was when we first opened up. Um, can I can I just say that? Or can I ask the question of you? Um, to my recall, that um, probably before just before you, um, it was just a, it was a, a tea a tea room cafe, wasn't it? it was it's been a, it's been it's been a coffee shop three times, yes. and it's been an Italian pizzeria once. And in, to my knowledge, none of them have never had a complaint. Yes, but they, they were running they, a different type of business. and but they were open till 11 o'clock at night. Were they? Yes, they were. The, the Italian pizzeria was open till 11 o'clock at night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, well, I, I, I need to... I'll come back to you in a minute, Jess. Um, I need to, uh, like my colleagues, um, talk about your understanding of your neighbours' difficulties. Uh, because there is a very comprehensive record here um, that your neighbouring property has taken about um, what they find so difficult to, uh, to live with, which is about smells and noise, which both my colleagues and myself have, uh, uh, have been asking you questions about. So it's very serious, um, the amount of... Um, uh, reporting that has been done there. So I'm going to ask uh, Aaron uh, if he could please find us uh, the picture, <coughs> which I think is the Zoom one, of the back of the property <coughs> actually showing the courtyard area. It was one that when we were looking at the audio, listening to the audio, um, it's one that we asked the officers to pull up for us then to see the size of the courtyard that you've got there and it's uh, location-wise to the, to the next property. So um, if we can just, are you okay? There we are. So, um, seems to be, and so this is a question first of all, um, seems to be a very small crowded area And, and can you tell us, um, if we were to judge, looking at the bottom table, the white circular top table there, how much further on does the premises go? Um, do you see the end of the gazebo on the right-hand side? you see a little, there's a chair there? And that's yeah. the back door, the back entrance to the, to the bar. And then just right, just to the right of that is the entrance to the sandwich bar. And at the bottom here, how much more land that's have you? That's it, that is it. There's that's a, it. There's, so that's a, the end. There's a barrier so, there. So, so would you agree with me that it's actually, in reality, a very small area, yeah. um, very close up to a neighbouring property, where you're actually getting in quite a lot of people? Where that brick pillar is... Yeah, on the two, left? Two, yeah, on the left. Uh -huh. Two foot away from that is where the camera is, where it picked up me talking to Jill on the phone from where the back door is of the sandwich, of the sandwich bar. And that yeah. is about... We've, four, we've, we've, got, we've got a photograph of that. It's about 14 foot, 15 foot away. And that's quite a distance for a microphone on a camera to pick up. And then you've got the, the, the size of a shop and then you've got the main road and you can hear the traffic going past quite loud. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that the volume on that camera has been put up to pick up any noise that's going on around the backyard. It's, it's, well, well, it's uh, magnified, the, 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 the voice. Um, I, I think there's also an argument that you have agreed that that is the full extent of the area well, it looks at, smaller, at the courtyard. It looks smaller on the picture. But when I was talking to Jill, I wasn't shouting down the phone at her. 
talking about Chinese, picking up a Chinese. I'm, yeah, talk, but, but, like I'm but, talking to you now. But will you, will you agree with me that um, it's a small area where you have the potential of having quite a lot of people in a very small area, yeah. which is very close to a well, next door neighbour? we can't have a lot of people at the moment due to the distancing. So if you see those tables, mm -hmm. if a couple come in and they sit at that table of four, we can't have anyone else on that table. No. The same as the other seating. And we don't ask people to get up and leave. So if they come in, they've got that table for the evening. But, but that's only at this moment in time. Um, well, you still have the potential years. that once um, restrictions uh, hopefully mm -hmm. change, you yeah, will have... That, that's why we suggested half nine that we go inside go if inside. that would help and that would make matters better for them if we be, and then a lot of people then will probably get up and leave to be so, honest if they have so to move inside after half nine how seriously have you taken the complaints because um can you tell me what <coughs> mitigation given that there are serious complaints not just by one neighbor but by other people and that it's, you know, required us to have this hearing this afternoon yeah. because people aren't happy about it. What attempts have you made to mitigate the smells given that clearly, or it seems to be apparent, that there is every possibility that the smells from your cooking in the left-hand building go through that roof space and get into that next door old property with... Um, not maybe not very solid walls. What attempts have you made, seeing that you know your neighbours aren't happy, what attempts have you made to get the smell sorted out? Have you, in fact, considered, and I know you, Mr. Manley has just said that he's just changed the, um, the charcoal, but how often did you do it before? It's a brand new, it's so a it's brand new filter we've bought since that complaints. We went right. out and paid I, out I, two and a half thousand pounds on a brand new extractor fan to go in there. But and, the environmental and people have been round and checked. I mean, they've been round to us several times. I do a deep clean every Sunday morning. Several times. Well, you know, every Sunday clean. morning I do a deep clean. And we, we do our best. I mean, if, if we hear raised noises, we, we ask people to keep it down. We do, and we have got the signage up. Um, I don't really think it's that sort of environment, to right, be honest. I don't. Well, well, you may not. However, your neighbours do. But do you see that building on the left where the light's coming off of? That used to be a bakehouse. Mm -hmm. They bought that house in 2000, and that was still a bakehouse when we moved into our... And they never moaned and complained about the smells. They were cooking 24 hours a day in that Baking building. Pies, yeah. And that's right in their garden. That's the hell. Yeah. Let, let's, let's just concentrate on your establishment. Yeah. yeah? Okay, right. just one sec. So can I, can I just, just, just to bring things back, calm things down a bit. On page 25, I'm using there, which I believe to be the... Um, uh, sorry, do you have this? You have a copy. Yeah. Let's have a look on page 25. Oh, so we, we've got a good... We've got a, a plan there of, of it all. Okay. So, so we, look, we, we can see on page 25 the plan, which is um, part of the um, fire risk assessment that was done. Okay? Yeah? So yeah. I, I, we'll be looking at that. And that then we relate into that picture as well. Yeah? Okay. So let's, let's do that. But let's concentrate on your, on your building. Yeah? Okay, great. Sorry, Chairman. I just wanted to come in there that's just to bring that in. That's fine. Um, yes, just to go back again. So you, you say that you've... Um, put this new system in. Um, however, it's all being checked by environmental health. And uh, if it would be necessary, um, would you be able to, or would you be willing to put a uh, different or a, a, an extended system in place there to take um, any smells up above um, and away from from the buildings, maybe environmental health can help me and clarify for myself and my colleagues whether that is something that um, you might be considering. So I'll, I'll ask environmental health and then I'll come back. Sure, I can answer that. Um, can I just add, um, you mentioned a point about the roof space. Can I sort of answer that query as well? Just want to clarify, you, you said that you have five star rating 
for food hygiene. So, and you, you're in the kitchen area where you said that it doesn't exhaust out to the external area, but it recycles back into the kitchen. So I would find it very difficult to consider that you'd have um, a ceiling that is not sealed if they've got five stars, because one of the considerations for, for food inspections is structural integrity and things like that. You know, if you've got falling elements that can fall into food, that would be brought into question, and it's unlikely that you'd achieve the, the highest rating. So um, for odours to permeate from the kitchen through that roof space into the neighbouring properties would be quite difficult, in my opinion. I think it's more likely that if there is a window open or a door, and it's exhausting out that way after being recycled back into the kitchen, and then any wind is picking up, that's likely. I, I, I would need to clarify with, with Joe as to, um, or, or indeed the residents, as to where they're experiencing the odour. Um, that, that might be something... Uh, yes, sir. Councillor Helfers. With your indulgence, Chairman, I have got the, um, my tablet, and you have indeed got a five-star rating. And the competency management, very good. Food hygiene safety, very good. Safety, structure, compliance, good. Okay, just thought to be there. That, so just a backup for you, that, That's very useful. Um, noise, so, and I shall actually bring in the um, complainants as well, because we need to hear from them what their experiences are, uh, as against your explanations. But um, regarding um, noise, um, again, given the fact that there is a lot of complaints about noise um, coming from um, the premises, um, I'm a little surprised that you're saying you can't stop it because obviously you've got a very close, small area there. And, and if you, excuse me one minute, one, if you are uh, aware that your neighbours are upset and complaining about noise, I would have thought it was very much upon you to, if you feel that the noise levels are rising, either in the building or outside, that you would have thought it absolutely important and an imperative that you, knowing that there's complaints of this nature, that you would actually make sure that you say to your, um, uh, to your clients that it's getting too noisy and, and, and hold it down. Um, we, we do do our absolute best if there is, but to whenever I, I'm working, I don't work every weekend, but when I do work, um, I just feel it's normal talk like any restaurant. The complaint is one complaining that we have all the houses at the other side have never ever complained about noise, not one of them. You know, it is how, you know, how many people are actually complaining about noise in the whole of the high street? You know, we've got a lot of letters that that people live in the high street that want us to get these extended hours that do not find us a nuisance of any sort. Again, you know, I'll go back, it is one household that are complaining about the noise. Um, I have to say, it's, Others are just it's, as not, it's, it's not the, the, the quantity, it's the quality of, of the concerns that people have got. And, and though I've read some of the sporting letters, one could say, well, a lot of those people live nowhere near it at all, but they're saying, please give it, please give it every help. So I think Councillor um, would like to, Councillor would like to speak again. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to go through you and ask um, legal if I should be declaring an interest now, because, as you know, I'm a director of Melbourne Hub, which is a uh, licensed restaurant and cafe. And so some of my questions are going to be based around what my knowledge of this industry is. So if you would require I declare an interest, it would be non-pecuniary, I would imagine. But Yes, Councillor, it, it's, it's, it's certainly of benefit to declare rather than not declare. But as you say, it's based on our knowledge of the industry and not um, in relation to specific matters. In that case, Chair, I declare an interest. I believe it to be non-pecuniary, but given my it, experience... In it's business, noted, Councillor Hales, and I think, actually, given your experience, it may be very helpful. Thank you. Um, 
It's actually a, a two-pronged question. It's one to Rory, it's one to Mr. Manny and Ms. Green. Beg your pardon, sorry. Um, the building that I, I run has high-level intake and exhaust. Well, the entire system is, is completely sealed um, and there are no cooking smells at all in the building. Everything is at, at ridge height, so it comes out into the atmosphere, as the chair was indicating earlier. Um, there's also the balance of intake and um, exhaust fans and what have you that actually help with that process. So, Rory, you'll be un you'd understand that all too well, I'm sure. Um, the reason I asked about the, roof, the common roof void is because any kind of smells that do permeate into a building will gradually permeate that building and then exude, if you like, continuously. Um, and we found that in the building that I managed, if we had the fan shut down completely, it goes everywhere. So with one window open, you can draw it right the way through. So my question would be on along the same lines as the chairman's, which was, can the system that you've just recently installed be adapted to have an external exhaust? It takes its internal air from the building, so it draws everything from the building and then takes it to the outside and then perhaps the notice, notice there's an existing flue on the side of your building where you're cooking. So it would be above that, I'm assuming, that there's a fireplace or an existing fireplace or flue or whatever that you could run that through if, if that was the case. So it was just, that was a question to you. And would that be something that environmental health would support? Because I understand the, the complainants' issues. And when you look at all of the, on up to page 64 and beyond, I think it is, overwhelmingly, it is a complaint about a food smell. Noise figures way down the charts, but it's food smells, whether it be bacon, baking, spicy, and those are the ones I read at the moment. So it, and pungent food smell. So there is a constant um, irritation, shall we say, with a food smell. So that would be my question to Rory, first of all, and then obviously to Mr. Manning for any confirmation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, so your point about the roof space, I, I fully agree, is, you know, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. As a sort of, in, in case I didn't clarify it, enough, I think it would be more likely that it would exhaust out of a window um, or an opening. Um, in terms of the applicants looking to improve their extraction system, for example, they exhaust it externally and use high level of discharge through ducting, um, additional uh, ventilation, we'd of course recommend that, we'd recommend that to any business because you're just improving it, you're reducing the likelihood of odour dispersal um, and causing nuisance to neighbours. Um, that's something that we would, if we had complaints, we would encourage to be upgraded, um, or if it's subject to a, a notice, uh, a, a, an abatement notice for odour. At the moment, we are investigating it, but we haven't got to that point at the moment. Um, another point I just wanted to sort of emphasise as well, there's been a lot of concern about odour, and I, I don't know a lot of the history on the, the complaints, um, but um, depending on what the Planning Commission allows, and my colleagues to the left, if they can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but odour is a consideration of public nuisance, but the application is for the extension to the supply of alcohol. So in theory, if this application were to be withdrawn, that cooking could take place up until, I believe it's 11 o'clock when late night refreshment is a licensed activity. So I'm just concerned about how much regard's being given if it's not really part of the application. Yeah, so we do look at all of the licensing objectives, which do include the prevention of public nuisance. Um, I, so my, my question then is just part yeah. of it, Mr. Lanny. Yes. Okay. So Lanny, you've, you've heard uh, Councillor Hale's question and you've said what uh, environmental health say. What do you say about... Um, improving what you've got? Well, I, I thought we did improve what we had from what we had for the last eight years, which was a derelict extractor fan, um, which was producing a lot more smell than what it did now. We've upgraded it all from what was there to what we've got now. Um, 
our output of cooking isn't that much to warrant us to put a, part, a chimney outside. Um, and then I don't think it will stop there. I think they will still complain about the chimney going outside as well. Because it, 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 it won't be, it'll be unsightly. Okay. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to bring in, and, and please don't think, um, neighbouring properties, that we've been ignoring you. We just really needed to um, get down to some details with the applicant. But um, because this is a roundtable discussion, and uh, we'd like to bring you in now, if you would, because you've heard the, the arguments that we've been asking, or the uh, questions we've been asking, and the replies from the applicant. Um, you're in this next door property, it's an old building. Can you, I, I mean, there's 16 pages of the information that you recorded. I'm sure, I'm sure you were told to do that. Um, and um, obviously, uh, there is a great deal of comment in, in there. Well, not comment, it's actually a recording of, of what, what you say has been happening. Uh, and as my colleagues have said, um, a lot of it is to do with the smell, but there is also the um, your concerns about the the noise and the noise levels. So could you perhaps lay out to myself and my colleagues, um, first of all, the, the, the business about smells. Where do you think, or how do you think, the smells that you uh, have recorded how have they got into your property? Because given the fact that uh, the applicant says it's a building, it's the far side, side left-hand side building um, that has the cooking, can you summarise for us what, what has been happening, um, the, what you've been experiencing, and why and how you think that, that um, it permeates into your building, please? Um, so roof space between could you come a little could you come a little bit louder right. the roof space um, between the two buildings um the left hand side where the cooking is done and the right hand side where the brasserie is um was open um, up into the into the roof void yes they have covered the first half of that but the back end of it is still open and a ladder allows you to get up and use storage up in that space you then have the, the waffle and door wall of our bedroom, uh, which obviously will have gaps and stuff will perme permeate through that. When we originally moved in, um, I went up there and I put insulation and boards, as Louis described, for the purposes of, of keeping it warm because it was a cold space. Never had to think about um, smells. Um, and I don't know why back in, in, in sort of early 2000s, we didn't have problems of smells. Something may have been happening that was different, but it wasn't a concern. So there was no vapor barrier. It was just about that sort of um, thermal aspect. When, the, um, when it all changed, as Louis said, was when they wanted to open up what was the butchers before in, in order to, to serve this, this type of food. And, and that's when we started to get smells coming through. And I don't know what actually changed to make that happen, but we then got smells coming through. And that's really what we've been, been recording. Um, we mentioned that to the landlord. Um, he, he talked about doing lots of grand things to put up a separate wall, to put vapor barriers in there. And we thought, yeah, okay, problem's gone away. Because Louis said, talk to the landlord. We then um, waited for him to do something. And in the end, he didn't do the things he talked about. What he did is he took down all the things I took, took um, put there and he got a tin of spray and he sprayed foam in between the different sort of um, rafters that had been screwed onto the back of, back of the sort of the wattle door frame. Um, we've never been allowed up there in order to, to do any more. There is certainly, from what I was told by the landlord, no vapour barrier. And therefore, however the smells are getting in there, they're getting in there. We and believe they're coming through the wall. Though. And we believe they're coming through the wall because we've got um, a proper membrane for the roof as, as well. Um, we've, we've, um, you know, we've got this, this complaint going on and whilst you can't talk about it, it will demonstrate that there are smells that are consistently getting in our bedroom. And I know we can't talk about it, but it will demonstrate it. Um, so the, the smells are real. The, the noise, which I know you haven't asked. Can about. I just stop you at that for a second, just at the, at the smells? Do you think that's where it's, it's coming? It's coming through that root space? 
I this think is what you're assuming. Right. And I don't know. Yeah. How, I don't know how the ventilation system is doing and what it's dragging and dropping to. But you've got a number of things going on that were different. You've got the cooking of the food that goes in in one space. You've got the movement of the food from from one space to another space. And then you've got the roof of the restaurant where they're that they're eating the food. And that roof has never been insulated. Um, and therefore, and, and, and there's an extractor fan that used to be in the middle for air conditioning. That was just removed and packed in some way. So I think that the smells could be coming either from the cooking, or it could be coming from the carrying of the food or being on the table. But we're getting food smells coming into that wall. And I think it can only be coming through our wattle and door wall, which has not got a vapour barrier. And, and are the smells worse? I mean, there's a lot of talk in that. Would you say that the smells are worse in the bedrooms rather than downstairs in your property? Primarily the bedroom, but when it gets really bad, not only the bedroom is full of odour, but you can walk up the stairs and as you get halfway up the stairs, it hits you. Okay, so, but, but, so not so bad on the ground. Correct. But as you go higher up into it's, it's, yes. the next it's, second floor, you get, you're getting the smells, which, right. which would seem to indicate it's it's from the roof space coming down. It's from the roof to, be, space. to be clear, it depends how you define roof, because the two roofs, as you will see from your, your photographs, the actual yep. roofs are separate. But yes. the space on the first floor above where the black gates are is a loft space. And that is where the main communication is. And that, I believe, is where the odours can just permeate through. I think that whole space is filling with with fumes and then gradually just offloading in, into our property through the bedroom. Okay. And it doesn't matter whether we have our windows shut. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you and we'll come back to you uh, to talk about the noise. But I think Miss Jackson wants to just join in at this point. But we will then come back to you and ask you about the noise situation. Thank you very much, Chair. I just want to reiterate the point here that we are dealing with a licensing act application. Clearly, the, the, the odours from the cooking smells are clearly a great concern for the local residents, as you've heard this afternoon. But we've got to be mindful of the fact this is an application we're dealing with for the sale of alcohol on and off the premises. Take away uh, alcohol, and obviously, quite right and proper, you could trade, you know, 7 to 11, for example, that need for any license from the local authority. Then it would fall to Rory's team to look at any such nuisance with regard to the odours and pollution, etc. So we've got to be mindful of the fact with respect that we are looking at the Licensing Act application question here today, Chair, which is looking at the public nuisance aspect caused by the retail sale of alcohol, not the operation of the premises as a uh, sandwich bar, bistro, etc. And could I just seek a, a point of clarification, please, from Ms. Jackson, Chair? Yeah. Yeah, Chair, could I perhaps just seek a clarification? Yeah. Legal officer first, please. Thank you. Can I just confirm, um, please, Ms. Jackson, in relation to extending the licensing hours, am I correct in thinking that food can only be served during those hours? Just confirm, Chair, if I may, the sale of hot food and drink it's only a licensable activity between the hours of 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. So it's out of the hours which have been requested or considered this afternoon. Yes. Can I respond, please? I'd like to respond to what's been said. Um, I'm reading from the notes from the previous meeting that we, we went to in 2019. And in your notes, it says legislation guidance. Uh, members should also be aware of the guidance under section 182 of the Licensing Act 2003. The prevention of public nuisance could therefore include low level nuisance, perhaps affecting a few people living locally. A reduction of their living, I'm making a, a, a gap there, and then it talks about reduction of their living and working immunity and environment of interesting parties in the vicinity. So it's not only about when alcohol's being drunk, in my opinion judging by these legal notes. Thank you very much for that. Um, Councillor Hay Thank you. Ooh. That's better. Um, yeah, it was, um, it was a 
kind of a to answer, answer a question to uh, Rachel from the licensing is that the reason for the going on about the food smells and what have you is that the, the applicant has quite clearly said that the bulk of their trade seems to be takeaway. And with the introduction of the alcohol license going further, right, um, I am partial to a bag of chips with a, with a pint or a drink afterwards as I go through the evening. So my, my thoughts on that process would be that there is the ability to extend the cooking, if you like, through that process. So if there is an issue with food smells, I would really want to get those cleared up so that that nuisance wouldn't be continued further into the evening. So that was where I was driving from. Um, is, is it okay just to put in, we don't do takeaway in the evening. No, when no. we shut Hoppers 2, there's no more takeaway. It is purely sit-down, sit -down. restaurant, food, with a drink. That's what I mean. Yeah, there's no, there's no, no takeaway of the evening. We don't do that anymore because it didn't work. Um, you, you, you missed my point. Oh. It, it wasn't the fact. You, oh. you said clearly earlier that your bulk of your trade was takeaway. Yeah. Right, and then you do the sit down and That's, the same. That's, That's yeah. fine. What I'm saying is that with the introduction of a longer period to drink, then the chances are that the, the food delivery will also go up within the premises, oh. so therefore more cooking. So that's why I was I was you know, searching away at the smell. We would the probably smell. do last food. We'd have to do cut it, have a cut oh, point fine. because people don't eat too late with a sit down. Uh, I'm going back to environmental health, um, having uh, heard what's just been said, and then I'm going to go back to the neighbours again. So, Rory. Thank you. Um, I've heard what the resident has said about, what, you know, what the guidance says in terms of low-level nuisance, um, and sort of further to what um, Rachel said, if this application were to be withdrawn or refused in its entirety, is there anything to prohibit that business from cooking food until 11 o'clock without having a license for it. There isn't. The only thing that is, is if they're planning permission, if there is a restriction on that. And that's sort of the emphasis. If this application didn't exist, they wouldn't have any prohibition on that. And I think that's important to, to be mindful of. Councillor Howell. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wish to ask um, Mr. I think is it, is it Mr. Bay and Ms. Betts a question. Um, you, you're not under the ob obligation to answer these questions, by the way. You are, you know, I just want your opinion on a question there. Um, with regards to the prevention of public nuisance, what do you f feel as being the neighbour would be the biggest problem if this licence was to be given um, with regards to the increase of hours? on your lives and, um, well, on your lives. Thank you. It, it's, it's noise first and then smell. I, I'm so sorry, sir. Could you just come a little bit closer to the mic? I'm having difficulty. It, it, it's primarily noise and, and then it, it is smell. Um, on the just, so, sorry to interrupt. Just, just bearing in mind what we said about smell, could you concentrate on your answer on the noise, please? Okay. Thank you. It's, it's on noise. And the problem has only arisen once they've started to use the courtyard in the evening and the restaurant in, in, in the evenings, um, where we get the noise coming through, um, both in the bedroom and, and the problems of, of it going on later and later is, is the noise actually is a walk. It's a continuous noise with music coming through and voices which get louder and louder as more people are eat, eating and drinking and having a good time. Um, that is a prevention on sleep. And it's just depressing because it goes on and goes on all the time. It just really get, gets to you. Outside in the courtyard, um, you've seen the small space. It's been very, very popular. Um, we have a garden. We, we, we use or we used to use our garden and we can't avoid the noise coming through into our garden to the point where we can't sit in our garden and relax in there because we've got neighbours who are having a party every night. Every Friday and Saturday night through the summer, it happens. And they consistently do it until past 9.30 and 10 o'clock. And whilst we don't listen to or any recordings that are made, we wait, you know, we've waited for some event, which was either a burglary, which is the point that they went in for, or it was, it was this. And therefore, I went searching for recordings. Uh, and I was pleased to actually find recordings that demonstrated that they haven't stopped the noise. They've actually included themselves within discussions in there as well. So if this extension went further, 
they would get worse. It would continue and it just has to stop because we can't use our gardens, we can't sleep, you know, we can't sleep in the afternoon. The noise goes on during the day, even when the shop is shut, it goes on. They, the noise comes into the street, it comes into the garden, you can't relax. So it's noise is the number one. But of course, the later in the day this goes to, the more, the more it becomes a concern because during the day we're busy, you know, perhaps we, we you know, we're happy to be a bit more, or more tolerant. Um, but if you want to go to bed or if you want to settle quietly and watch a television programme and you're struggling because of the noise, that is a real problem. And if that now goes to regularly, potentially every day, to way beyond when we choose to stay up, that's going to be a huge problem for our quality of life and, and sleep. You know, we've, 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 we've got early morning deliveries. That are, I got woken up at 6 a.m. this morning by their bread delivery. And if we're now talking about 11 o'clock at night, it's too much. It's very stressful and it is really impacting on our lives in this house. So, so uh, what you're saying is that um, to change every single day of the week to what would be in reality 11 p.m. closure, and that's would... if they, that's if it was 100% perfectly executed, and we know that it has not been up till now. When we've said anything about it, it's just been ignored and say, take it up with the council. This only started, you know, when they put this new, this started to use that space. We have got on fine with them until that point. It was just about them using this space. And the only time when there was a planning permission to actually, actually use this space for this type of purpose, there were conditions that said there had to be design around noise and smells before work was done. Those, that, work, that, that, that application lapsed, the conditions um, weren't there pursued, but they've actually started to use that space. And the building, it's a listed building, it was never designed for this purpose. And, and now we're suffering. So, um, w what you're saying is, it all exacerbated, or it, it became a problem, once the courtyard was used, and do you, you've heard what the, uh, what the talk has been, the negotiation has been uh, regarding uh, the courtyard time um, of clearing that courtyard at 9.30. Uh, what, do you, what do you feel about that? We, we, we can't relax in our garden already at the weekend. You put yourselves in our situation where you used to be able to sit in the garden, have friends around, or just sit there and relax. We cannot, because this is going on. You have got neighbours that are having a party, as far as we're concerned. I know it's not a party. I know they're not talking particularly loud, but we're so close. We get that noise every weekend. And because of the whole attitude of, of Louie and Joe in terms of our complaints, it makes us angry. It makes us sad to the point where we've lived in this house for 20 years and we feel like moving. And I've spent a fortune. I know Louis said it's all about money, but it's about quality of life, to be honest. I don't want to ask you a leading question, but I'm not quite sure if I've had my the, the last one answered. The uh, what has been put forward is a 9:30 close off of that courtyard. It doesn't change a thing. Three. It doesn't. It doesn't change the fact that nine nine o'clock, eight o'clock is still ruining our lives in our garden. It shouldn't happen, they're full stop. That's okay. I just wanted to clarify on that point because that original point is actually wrong. Um, so what Environmental Health have requested is the following. So alcohol shall only be permitted in the external areas of the premises until 9 p.m. Sunday to Thursday but until 10.30 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays, bank holidays and Valentine's Day. Thank you very much for that, Brooke. Sorry, I didn't pick up on. I couldn't understand Aaron's <laughs> messages to me. Um, okay, so are we all clear about that now, what the, um, what the timetable is? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
that was just explaining again the times. Um, to the neighbours, have you got any further um, input that you'd like to give us? Anything that you feel that we haven't covered enough, that you haven't been asked about, um, or would like to talk about at this stage? I'd like to say that it, it just seems a bit crazy to be insisting upon extra days when there are so many days um, of their existing permissions that they, they seem to be closed for. That was one point. Um, uh, you know, why do you need extra hours if, if people aren't coming? Uh, the second point was there was quite a lot of discussion about bins and rodents. And um, it's been a problem for a long time. And my under, by the look of things, there's actually a new lid gone on the wheelie bin. Um, but it doesn't fit the wheelie bin. So there is still a gap. So the problem with the rodents is not about putting lots of poison down and poisoning all the local wildlife. It's about having a lid that fits to the bin and not having a bin that's overflowing. Um, the, 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 the bottom can, lids. There's a South Camels bins, we need to see how they're fitting. Um, but can yeah, I use, sorry, I'm, the, going the, to, I'm, going, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask, ask the applicant the same question in a second. Um, Obviously, this concern has been um, going on for a while, and we've got you know lots of pages of the of the information that you've put down of your experiences. And did you say that? Um, did I hear correctly that you said that when you um, had tried to talk to the applicant about your concerns and your problems, um, that you didn't get a very good reply? But how has the applicant at any time? come in uh, to see you and sit down and see if there's something that they could actually do to, to fix it so that your no. problems are resolved and their commercial business continues? Not at all. We had, the, we had the discussion following three years again when we had this review that, you know, things would be done. We, we um, sat down with them uh, within weeks. We talked about what needed to be done. It was going to be delayed for six months because they couldn't afford and when we got around to six months and we asked, they said, well, there is no problem, go away. And it's been sort of difficult and hostile. And it's really sad because we used to get on fine and it's just this thing. And I feel slightly sorry for them because they, they're using a, a space that really they shouldn't be using. It's not appropriate. Um, and, and all the problems we, we have are because the space isn't right for what they're trying to do. Um, and, yeah, it, it, it is... It is um, we can't go on with this any longer. And, and then the extension just makes it worse. You know, as we say, we have a complaint because we can't go on with it any longer. Um, I mean, we, we, were, we were quite conciliatory last time. I, I believe you chaired the session last time, Councillor Roberts. Um, and I remember your closing remarks and the hopes and, and uh, expectations that were set at that point. And I now compare them to our experiences over um, since and I'm afraid what happened was very different to what was outlined in the meeting and um, we, we, we're just completely unhappy about it. And we, 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 we now don't have faith that something will happen that even if it said that something would happen it would happen because it hasn't happened in the three years and um, you know our main bedroom isn't used now for sleeping in because it, it, it's it's so unpleasant. Uh, Mr. Lamy, and then and then I shall uh, make a comment. So you, you, uh, the same question to you. Um, given the fact that these are close neighbours and one tries to get on with one's neighbours, and given the uh, very clear um, concerns of the neighbours, you know, what have what have you attempted to to do regarding hands across the water? with um, your neighbours to get, get this resolved? Because I would have thought, you know, for you, you wouldn't we, have wanted unnecessary aggravation. We do try and get on with them, but they, they can... It's just, we do our best. We, we in the beginning, we, we sat down and we tried to do everything we could for them, and we're not 
builders or anything like that. Our landlord is. So we passed it on to him, the building concerns. He's a builder. He's a well-known builder in the village. Um, so we passed it on to him and he dealt with the wall and all that that they wanted. That was not anything to do with us. We make sandwiches for a living. Um, we tried to talk to him, etc., and get on, but constantly complaining, complaining. So in the end, my and Louis' thinking is, we can't, let's call in the experts, and if whatever they find, and if they tell us to do, if we're not clean enough, we're not COVID-friendly enough, whatever, we'll work with them. Sorry. And that's what we're prepared to do. <coughs> but the last time we spoke to Simon was we had a problem with them having a party in their garden and dogs might have got thrown over the wall and we lost a whole lost table, a cut, got whole up table. and walked out that night. We didn't call the police, a customer wanted to. We spoke to Simon and Louis did, and he said he would deal with it. He said he would deal with it. They never sent their son round to apologise to us. Do you know how that made us feel? How uncomfortable? So after that, we decided... We, we don't want to make big talk. We say, I'll say good morning, I'll nod or whatever. And I think it's best it's left like that. That's right. I felt very upset by that. I, you imagine trying to explain to one of your customers. They're making us sound like... Dogs might come over the wall because that's the way their son thinks about us. It was very upsetting. And I, I don't choose to speak to them anymore. I'm sorry. I will speak to the environmental people. I will speak to the noise. You can put monitors in. We will work with you as best as we possibly can to rectify this problem. But there's only so far... They're I'm making us sound like we're having a baby before being very upset, that. you know. I think I do have to respond on behalf of what from there. I, I don't think this is now adding to the, to the debate, but I would say that I do remember that uh, at the previous uh, discussion, um, though obviously I do come to it fresh, that there was talk at the end that we did expect um, that things would be put into place. We um, don't, and we, I, and I, to, to avoid just the sort of situation that we've got, but you're saying that really um, it's down, your landlord hasn't gone along with that, but um, you know, is it not upon you to have actually explained to your landlord that this is causing you a lot of aggravation and it's up to your landlord to get he it did. done. He did. He, he, as far as he's concerned, he has done what, what needed, needed to be done. done. And that's where we, we, it was left with us. That but, he but had that's gone up there clearly not worked, has it? Because well, I don't know. He's the builder. He's the builder. I would have to we, speak we, to we him. We do not have loud music every Friday and Saturday night. We, don't or have, the night. we have background music. We have background music. My music... It's system music consists of an it? iPhone. I'm going to take, and a, and a, I'm going to take advice from the... Uh, from uh, the, the offices, the legal offices and the um, officers, the licensing officers here. If we were to, um, if we were to defer any, uh, can we first of all defer any decision uh, on this um, until, um, until the outstanding concerns have been actually um, looked into and rectified. Can we do that, first of all? Chair, you are here to determine this application based on the facts put before you. So, um, pending, of course, the legal advice, my, my response would be you are here to determine this application today. Your options are, as Brooke had in the introduction, you can grant, refuse, or grant with conditions. Um, but you'll have to make a decision based on that information. That answers my question, I think, unless legal would want to. Yes, Chair, just to reiterate what Ms Jackson said, she's correct in that um, there are investigations ongoing, as um, Mr Cosgrove has yeah. mentioned. But, and I'm not so, for a moment saying that um, I've made up my mind at all on this at the moment, but um, we could, as you say, um, implement the sort of, those sort of conditions Chair, absolutely right. You have the right as a committee today to put any conditions which would support, support or promote the licensing objectives. And that's quite right. And of course, pending any future investigation, environmental health, any responsible authority or any interested party could of course apply for review of the premises license if that was deemed appropriate. 
the last nice. set of conditions were ignored. Well, um, your comments have been noted, I can assure you, on that one. So, um, if we were, and I'm absolutely not saying that this is what we're going to do, but if we were to um, support it today, um, I think that any conditions would have to be extremely taken seriously. Um, so, any further questions from my colleagues? Okay, any further input from officers that they think that we haven't covered? No, we're still okay. And your other colleagues, Rory, are they happy? Nothing further to add, thank you. Okay, and legal, nothing further to add? Nothing further, Chair. We've covered everything insofar as the objectives that we need to consider, the relevant information, and the um, possibility of the matter being brought back for further review hearings in the future if required. Um, and I'm not asking either party to go over what they've already said, but if, if there are any points that they um, would like to finalise um, their um, debate with, um, I'm happy, quite happy to look at them now. Um, yourselves? Sorry, Chair, just for procedurally, if I may, the applicant should have the final some and get okay. opportunity. Okay, so we'll, we'll go to the neighbours first. Is there anything um, that the neighbours feel that haven't been um, covered up to date that you would like to add at this last moment before we go as a final round to the, um, to the applicant? I understand Lou and Jill wanting to make some money and be successful, but not so, sometimes things are done in the wrong place and it in fact impacts other people to their detriment and it can't always be about approve, approve, approve. Something has to be protected and looked after um, and we need protecting in this respect. Thank you very much. Um, yourselves? Um, I do feel that we desperately do need these extra hours on the Friday and the Saturday night um, to make the business work. Um, We've already lost three shops in the village in the last two years, and it would be a shame to lose another one. We've been there 10 years now, and it is getting to that point that without these hours, sadly, I don't think we'll continue. Well, the thing is, it'll always be a commercial building. If it's not it's us, it's it'll be someone, be someone else. else. It'll, it'll just be one after the other. Even if it was a shoe shop, they'll be moaning about the, the smell of the leather, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. So, oh, 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 oh. Mm. It is what it is. But, but, sorry, I've got to say this. It's A3, A5. The whole premise was about being able to serve um, food. Sorry, Chair, I think this isn't really appropriate at this point. Actually, I think we need to tell Mr. Barthy that his representations have ended at this point. The discussion is now closed. We will ask the um, two parties uh, now to um, leave the meeting either physically or, or by um, the video. And we will then, um, the three members who met the uh, final decision, will um, go into closed session with the help and support of the legal officer and admin. And um, will you be wanting to stay for? Um, the decision because um, if you need to be away, um, you you know you're f quite free to do so, and then we will inform you about the result. What are you going to do? Um, yeah, we'll we'll get off if that's okay. Got, okay. And, uh, somebody uh, give us a phone call or something. Is okay. That well, that will happen as soon as we um, finish. Uh, we will contact you. I have to say this because in, because you're not staying. However, if, um, if the uh, decision that we make, yes or no, is not to your liking, you have the right of appeal to the Magistrates' Court, which has to be done within 21 days from today. But you have that right um, to go um, elsewhere. So um, thank you, um, both um, sides of the uh, appeal, for your attendance today, uh, which is appreciated. 
and for the information that you've given us, which will now be very carefully scrutinised and considered by myself and my colleagues. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.